Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a motorcycle racing TV show, Team Chicago Challenge. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. My um, website is teamchicago.tv. We're at Expert Cycle in Indiana. I'm here with my good friend Bob Goodpastor. We're going to look at some of the great bikes he's got in his collection. He's been in this shop. His dad started his business at this location in 1952. Bob said he's been working here since 1960. Got to race motorcycles all over the country. And uh, but we're gonna look at the bikes he's got here. He's got some real great motorcycles. So don't forget my email, teamdan45 at gmail.com. And he's got a lovely dog, but the dog just wants a play. I probably met Bob Goodpasture and his dad, John, at Groton Raceway. Back in 1994, the first time I recorded and produced two TV shows with Arma was at Groton Raceway in 1994. We are looking at Bob's two race bikes. These are both Nortons. This first one here is a 750 engine, and the other one is a 650 engine. Both of these motorcycles are using the famous Norton feather bed frames. The 650 has got a slimline frame and the 750 has got the wide line frame. Bob put both of these motorcycles together himself and he raced these motorcycles with Arma. I know he won a good number of races. Now Bob was considered a Norton guy because he raced these Norton motorcycles. But as we will find out, he's probably raced more BSA motorcycles than Norton's over his career. It's just like I am known as a Triumph guy because I raced my Triumph, Trackmaster Frame Triumph, but in reality, I've raced many, many more miles with Yamaha motorcycles. So let's talk to Bob Goodpastor, and he's going to tell us about this great shop in Indiana. Hi, it's Bob Goodpastor, and I'm um, just running here playing around with my dad's Fergie. With, uh, he started the building in 1952, and uh, he, he pretty well stayed with it, and, and, and I got to stay with it also. Uh, and, and generally, we, for, from that time, you know, 72 years ago for me, uh, I was able to run the bikes all the time. Yeah, a lot of fun. And uh, you need, need to try that. All right, so you motocrossed or scrambled first and then you got into motocross, correct? Well, actually, we, we did, we scrambled, we, uh, just about every part of it. Or, you know, we did, we did the um, motocross, uh, Santa Fe, you know, running on the tree there, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the Enduros. I uh, had the chances to get the racing in all the different places. You know, that was when we go down to do a flat track, and, uh, and, and then that was every, uh, every other week. But then when the, when the third week, it was more awesome. You know, where we would go out and, 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 and scramble over the jumps in the whole world. Right, 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 right. You know, I, so I, you I, tried, you did all different types of racing? Yes. Okay, so then we, when we met, you were basically road racing with Arma. Yes. And you raced Nortons. You had yeah. two Nortons that you were racing. Yep. All right, tell me about those two bikes. One of the things that I really enjoyed was uh, doing two different classes. You know, the, 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 had a 650 and a 750, and uh, just put one down, put the other one out, and, and a lot of times we had a time winning. And uh, those bikes they have. You were telling me you have feather bed frames. There's a wide frame and yeah. a narrow frame. Yeah, and and actually also you know the, the, there's a wide line frame frame and, and the slim line uh, as this went on. You know, the two bikes, one had the slim line which was very small mm -hmm. and comfortable, and uh, and then the other one was the uh, the wide line which was the beginning of that, mm -hmm. and and that was working even better. That's what I was. I was pretty lucky with that. So with Arma, you won a few championships over the year. I was very lucky to get a lot of uh, uh, winning. You know what I mean? I was able to go just about where I want, and and uh, 
and, 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 and battled it and, and made it. Right. Uh, it, uh, I just had a, lot of, a hell of a lot of fun. And now your son's racing those two bikes? My son is also raising them bikes in, in both classes uh, and doing very well with them. Uh, it's, it's really, really nice. Thank you, Bob. And in the showroom, we spot this 1968 Norton Atlas. Now, the Norton Atlas uses the feather bed frame, which was introduced in 1950, and Norton then used it for all their production motorcycles. The feather bed frame was considered the best frame built at that time, a great frame for handling. The Norton 750 engine, the twin cylinder engine, and now we're looking at a 1974 Norton 850. And this is using the isoelastic frame where the engine and the swing arm are all connected to the frame separately using rubber mounts. In 74, the bike still shifted on the right. Federal mandated that all motorcycles sold in the United States had a shift on the left. This 1975 Norton 850 with an electric start shifts on the left as was required by federal law. These are two beautiful examples of Norton motorcycles. This 1975 Norton Commando may be one of the last Norton motorcycles to come to dealers in the USA. Norton continued with a few other models, the Wanko engine, but those were not imported. So if you're a Norton dealer in the USA, this was the last bike you could get. Right next to it is this beautiful Rickman Matisse road race chassis. Don and Eric Rickman were motocrossers in England. They got together with Matisse and they designed these kits. Bob told me he put this together using a Triumph three-cylinder Triton engine. He never raced this bike. This kit back then probably would have cost around $2,000. It would have been the frame, the fiberglass, and the wheels. So it was very expensive at that time but Bob took this challenge on and put this beautiful bike together. But like he said, he never raced this three-cylinder Triumph-powered Rickman. Now is another Rickman chassis right there. This is a 650 BSA twin. It's got an ARD mag. And these frames were made to take these twin-cylinder BSAs and Triumphs so people could motocross them. You can see how well made this frame is. It's got a 21 inch front wheel on this bike. So Bob explained to me that when he started racing with his dad, they would go to many different events. Back in that era, the late 60s and into the 70s, there was many, many scramble tracks this is a little bit before motocross hit the scene, but motocross was coming on. This bike here has got the two exhaust pipes coming out on the left side, more ground clearance, so this bike could be used for motocross or scrambles. A few people tried flat tracking these bikes. They did not work as well as the Trackmaster frames or the Champion frames that I was more familiar with. So when I was racing in that early era in the 70s, I was flat track racing, racing at Santa Fe Speedway and half mile tracks and some TT tracks. Bob at the same time was racing with his dad and they were doing racing scramble events, motocross events. And here is a B50 BSA, this 500cc BSA motocross bike was built between 1971 and 1973 when BSA went out of business.
Triumph continued with the same bike, a 500cc single. As you can see, this one has got the skinny tank on it, so this would have been used for flat tracking, maybe. Now we're looking at a Gold Star Scrambler, also known as a Catalina Scrambler, because Feet Meredith won the Catalina Grand Prix race in California on the island, and they started calling this the Catalina Scrambler. I have never seen one this nice. This is the Gold Star engine. As you can see, the engine is separate from the transmission. It's a 500cc engine. As a side note, Bob and I were talking about Jeff Smith, who was the director of ARMA, American Historic Racing Motorcycles Association, and a two-time world champion. Jeff Smith told me that when he won the championship in 1964, 1965, this is the World Motocross Championship, he did it with the 441 Victor motor, which was a unit construction engine, like that V50 in the showroom, not the Gold Star engine. Now we're looking at this Mako. It looks like it's a 400, and this is the bike that Bob rode in Duros. So like I said, during that era, in the 70s, the early 70s, when I was just flat track racing, Bob was doing many, many different forms of racing in Indiana, Illinois, Ohio. And Enduros are timed events. Usually they're anywhere from 70 to 80 miles long. You may do two laps through the woods, a timed event where you gotta maintain a 24 mile an hour average. So in this area, you can see a two-stroke engine, long travel suspension, 21-inch wheel on the front, but right down the line, and this is probably a very classic motorcycle. Bill Baird from Sterling, Illinois, won the AMA Enduro Championship with one of these Triumphs. This was one of his bikes. It's a 500 twin unit construction Triumph motor. You can see it's got up pipes to give more ground clearance, but he won the championship in 1962 and continued winning it for the next seven years all the way to 1968. Triumph motorcycles were the Enduro Championship motorcycle of that era. During that same era, Gary Nixon won the Grand National Championship race in the 500cc Triumph motorcycle, beating of 750 Flathead Harleys, and won the championship in 67 and 68. Bob Lippard set the land speed record in 1966 when he went 200 and 45 miles an hour on the salt flats. So you could see why Triumph was such a dominant brand during that era. Now we're looking at a 400cc Norton. In the early 1970s to compete with the Japanese, Norton Motorcycles made this 400cc twin with an electric start so that they could compete with the 350 and the 400 Honda motorcycles. They did not sell very many of these bikes. Triumph and BSA also were building a 350 twin to compete that never really came out. Now we're looking at a T100, I think this is, but this is a 1953 Triumph. It could be a 350 or 400 cc engine twin but it was a rigid tail motorcycle, meaning no suspension, but to give some suspension, this motorcycle has the rear hub is the suspension of this motorcycle. As we look at this hub, it looks pretty big in diameter, and it allowed the wheel to move up and down, and from what I understand, talking to many people, it did give a little bit of suspension, 
but it was terrible as far as the overall handling of the motorcycle, and it only was there for a couple years. But this is a 1953 pre-unit Triumph, either 350 or 400 cc motorcycle. We are looking at a 1972 BSA single carb Thunderbolt, I believe, but this is the last year of the BSAs. They went to oil in the frame. The styling wasn't that great. And uh, this was the last year for BSA in America. There was no 1973 BSAs released to the American market. And now we're looking at another BSA Gold Star. The story behind this bike is that John sold his bike to a customer. The customer wanted it custom built at the dealership. So John changed the gas tank, put a solo seat on, put the pillion pad on, and changed the front wheel to give him a better brake. This is what you would call in the early days a dealer built customer bike. 13 years ago, Bob and John had the opportunity to buy this bike back from their customer, and they did, and they put it in their showroom. So this is another one of the BSA Gold Stars that Expert Cycle has. And now we're looking at a 250 BSA with a blue gas tank. Now the 250 is a unit construction, single cylinder motorcycle. The engine is similar to the 441 Victor motor. So when this bike came using the same chassis, the blue one was the 250, the blue paint job. It's a fiberglass gas tank. And if they put the 440 Victor motor in it, then they use the red gas tank. And Bob has an example of the red fiberglass gas tank and side covers in the back of the shop. Those bikes sold for around $800, I believe, back in 71 and 72, something along that line, whereas the 350 Honda was $595. And now we're looking at a pretty 1967 Triumph Bonneville. Bob says this bike is ready to roll off the showroom. This is a classic looking Triumph motorcycle. Bonneville, meaning twin carbs. You can see how nice the original paint is on this motorcycle. As a side note, I graduated from high school in 1967, and I was more interested in having a great car. I had a 63 Chevy Super Sport. I had friends that had motorcycles, but at that point, that 63 Chevy was more important to me. And now we're looking at a 1979 Triumph came out with a bike with mag wheels. Also, this bike has a two in the one exhaust system, painted black 1979 Triumph Bonneville. The black paint job looks pretty good but I don't know about the mag wheels, even though all my Yamaha race bikes all had mag wheels. And now we're looking at the last Triumph brought into this country. This is 1983. This was called the Triumph TSS. TSS stood for Triumph Super Sport 750 short rod engine 
I don't know if I like the paint job on this bike, but I should also point out that in 1983, you could have gotten this bike with an eight valve engine. This is a four valve engine, which was standard on most Triumphs for all those years. They also made an eight valve engine available and Bob at Expert Psycho is, has one of those engines in the back. So we're gonna take a look at this eight valve engine, meaning there's two exhaust valves, two intake valves for each cylinder. It's a very sharp looking engine here. We look inside and you see the porting for two intake valves and two exhaust valves for each cylinder. I would definitely love to have this engine in my race bike. I'm sure it would put out much more horsepower than I currently have. There was many financial problems you got to remember in the 70s, there was runaway inflation when Jimmy Carter was president. And there was many labor problems in England. We're looking at a 1975 Triumph Triton. The last year for the Triton, it's got the left foot shift and it's got the forward slant like a BSA engine. And as we take another look at the two race bikes, very outstanding motorcycles. You have to remember, Bob built these bikes using the feather bed frames, using the best components, dry clutch setup. The Norton engines have a separate engine and transmission. And in the primary cover, side which is belt driven on these bikes is what ties the engine and the transmission together but they're a separate component two lovely motorcycles in the showroom at expert cycle but the bike i wanted to talk about the most is this beautiful rocket three because i also have a Rocket 3 just like this. Same color gas tank, fenders, all have been painted and are in storage. But when I raced my Rocket 3 at Road America in 1980, I spun the crank, meaning the center crank journal got damaged and the engine has to come apart. Sad to say, the engine's been sitting under my workbench since 1980. It's only 43 years ago, but I intend to put it together and get it running. I could see that Bob has installed an electric start on this Rocket 3, and he told me he had a side hack on this motorcycle, and he would use this motorcycle as his daily driver. This bike looks great, and I hope someday I can bring my Rocket 3 out and ride it again, hopefully soon. And as we spot a couple of bicycles, this is the BSA Boys Bicycle Red. I have never seen any of these. This is a BSA Girls Bike Blue. And they also have, Bob also has, a Triumph bicycle. And if you visit Expert Cycle, the one item you must take a look at, because it is so beautiful, it's a model of a real crane. Bob was involved with having one of these cranes put on a job site where he was at. 
this crane was meant to lift, I think he said, 10,000 pounds, 1,000 feet. So you can see the extra tower on the back, the counterweight. And this company awarded this model of one of these cranes. They built three of them. And they gave Bob Goodpasture this beautiful model. It is worth the trip, the expert cycle, to see all the wonderful things they have, especially this wonderful looking crane. It is priceless. I had a great time and learned quite a bit hanging out with Bob Goodpaster at Expert Motorcycle Works. And for more information, go to their website, expertmotorcycleworks.com. Give them a call first at 219-942-2401 to make sure what hours they are there. It was a great day for me. And to contact me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action. Dan Schmidt Politics to learn what makes America great. And I highly encourage you to visit the World of Motorcycle Museum in Winnemac, Indiana four miles south of North Judson. They're right on Highway Indiana 39. Give them a call first at 574-896-3172. It's a great trip and a great collection of motorcycles.